having to play against Klay Thompson. What is that going to be like for, don't for you? For the Don't do Talk this to me. Talk to me, Steph. <laughs> He's got that, right, Steph? I'm, Come on, Steph. I'm not ready for this, man. <laughs> All right, man. Tonight, we'll see something that we've never seen ever. Stephen Curry. Klay Thompson and Draymond Green all on the floor together, but not all of them being teammates. In 2022, Steph, Klay, and Draymond, they won their fourth championship together. And it's safe to say everything went downhill from there. Directly after winning that championship, Golden State gave out contracts that didn't necessarily age well. And to me, after that one sole championship, egos colliding and contractual disputes ended something that seemed to be special, in my opinion, a little bit prematurely. Golden State's management and Klay Thompson, they faced the ugly reality of the business side having to trump legacy and loyalty. After Golden State won that championship, they had to pay some of their main new pieces during that run, Andrew Wiggins and Jordan Poole. Reportedly, that didn't really sit well with some of the legendary Golden State vets, aka Klay Thompson and Draymond Green also seeking contracts. Even after that championship year and how rough it was, mainly because of Draymond Green, they still got him paid. Klay Thompson reportedly wanted that exact same deal, but they just couldn't do it. In 2023, even through all his BS, Draymond was fourth in the DPOI voting and look at his impact. Love him or hate him, that man means a lot to that franchise and they recognized that and they paid him. For Klay, it wasn't really that smooth and his impact clearly wasn't as prioritized. In that Game 7 versus Sacramento, Stephen Curry went off, broke the Game 7 record momentarily, had 50 points, all that. It was amazing. But never forget exactly why he had to. Klay Thompson, in that very same game, he shot 19 times and made four of them. Directly after that game, continued a trend of Klay Thompson being historically bad. And if you want to know exactly how bad, li listen to this. Counting that awful Game 7 performance against Sacramento and the Lakers series, Klay Thompson played seven playoff games. He shot under 30%, not 40%, 30%, four times. His confidence was completely shot, and it definitely cost him in that series. Golden State didn't want to give him a max after that. Klay Thompson bet on himself and unfortunately lost. And looking back on it, Golden State made an extremely tough decision, but it was extremely smart. Today's video is sponsored by SeatGeek. The NBA season is here. The NFL season with my Ravens and MB3 Lamar is here live. And my friends over at SeatGeek, they have the perfect deal to allow you to see your favorite athletes in full effect. Everyone can use my code SWISHOUT10 and get 10% off of any tickets on SeatGeek, whether you're new or not. It doesn't have to be just sports. This goes for concerts, festivals, maybe with your girl, you, you name it. SeatGeek, they make your job very easy. They rate their own tickets on a scale to one to 10. So the greener the dots are, you know you're getting a great deal. The yellow, red, orange ones, well, not, not so much. Also, every ticket is backed up by their buyer's guarantee. So you can feel pretty secure getting your spot. Head over to the SeatGeek app right now. Use my promo code SWISHOUT10, no matter how many times you bought tickets on SeatGeek before, and get 10% off of your next order. Don't wait. Do it right now while everything is live and going. This is for a limited time only. I'm happy as hell he gone. And the reason I'm happy he's gone is because he wasn't happy no more. I think it was time for the organization. Like, we've been in the tax for six straight years. And so what Clay just did, and, and nobody will give him credit for it, what Clay just did is he just released, he just relieved this organization mm -hmm. of the financial hardships that the organization was starting to face. Every time I heard Draymond Green talk about Clay leaving this summer, he never sounded too mad about it. Not saying he didn't love Clay, not saying that wasn't his brother, it was. But he always sounded very optimistic about their future now that Clay is gone. Draymond said something that was extremely key to me. Clay leaving also opened up a lot financially for Golden State, so he kind of did them a favor. And he's 100% right. Last year, you know who had the highest payroll in the entire league? It was Golden State, and it completely handicapped their roster. Last year, nobody would have said Golden State had this extremely talented, super loaded team. So why spend as if you do? It was obviously way more names 
than actual talent. And this year, they've disposed of a lot of those big names and brought in real complimentary talent. This year, salary-wise, as opposed to being number one like they were last year, they're not even in the top 10. I remember Draymond said this right before the regular season actually started. And to me, these were the first signs that things might actually be different. With Clay leaving, it almost felt like the mark of a new thing. Steve, been, he, Steve was killing us in camp. When you've done it as many times as we've done it, there's a filler. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying we're going to go win a championship, but I am saying don't let us win another fucking championship. In 2022, Golden State went undefeated in the preseason, and they ultimately won an NBA championship. This year, and I know it seems extremely irrelevant and silly, but they also did the exact same thing, and they started out very hot, just like 2022. Golden State just completed one of the toughest road stretches probably of the year, and they went 4-1. and one. At Houston, without Stephen Curry. At Washington, who is improving, and they had the little Jordan Poole, Draymond rivalry element. At Boston, and I know somebody will say, well, they didn't even have Jalen Brown. Well, do you know what Boston's record going back to last year was without the finals MVP? They played 14 games. They won all 14 of them. Golden State gave them that one L in two years. At Cleveland, who was undefeated and they have history, and eventually at OKC, and they lost Chet, but still, that, that was an extremely tough stretch. Now, what makes this early stretch so impressive to me so far is what seems to be the complete 180 as to who they were last year and most definitely the year before last. The season after they won the NBA championship, for whatever reason, Golden State couldn't win on the road. It, it was the weirdest thing ever. Probably a little bit of age, chemistry, whatever. But if you look at their record, they were one of the worst road teams in the league. Last year, it completely flipped. They struggled at home. Last season, Golden State had the worst home record out of any team that actually finished above 500. I know it's extremely early, but this season, they seem a lot more balanced despite wherever they play. And what I admire about this version of Golden State's team is Steve Kerr going back to what they were built off of. Defense and strength in numbers. Golden State, they're the only team that completely runs a 12-man lineup. Like, no BS, they actually run a 12-man lineup. So far this year, and I'm sure it will change, but nobody on their team is even averaging 30 minutes a night. Nobody. This season so far, these are the highest scoring benches in the NBA. And then this is Golden State. That team is damn near scoring 60 points a night off their bench. That's unheard of. Look at the top five bench scorers in the league this year. They have two in the top three. Golden State also gave Draymond Green that contract that we spoke about two summers ago. And man, was it worth it. Draymond's numbers don't really show it, as they never really have. But he's been impeccable defensively and leading that unit to one of the stingiest defenses in the entire NBA. This season, led by Draymond, they're allowing the lowest three-point percentage this year, one of the lowest two-point percentage this year, one of the lowest field goal percentiles this year, some of the lowest points. If you look at all the best teams in the NBA this year, that matters, and Draymond is earning that contract. If you want to know exactly how dominant Draymond really is numbers-wise, think about Zion Williamson. Anybody who's ever seen Zion Williamson play ever knows he's one of the most efficient players in the entire sport simply because of how he dominates the paint. That's simply what he does, that's who he is, and that's what makes him great. Well, in their second meeting this year, Draymond held Zion Williamson to 12 points, and he missed a career high 15 shots. Zion doesn't really miss that many shots. Like, he's a very efficient player, and that never happens. That was actually the most shots Zion has ever missed in his career since six months ago when he also played Draymond Green again. Like I said, love him or hate him, that's who he is and he's one of the best defensive players ever. Also, now that Steve Kerr has embraced this 12-man rotation since losing Klay Thompson and adding in DeAnthony Melton and Kyle Anderson and Buddy Heald, they're getting insane production everywhere. Golden State is third in steals this year. Damn near eight players on their team is averaging a steal a night. Everybody is active. Golden State doesn't even have a player over 6'9". Their tallest player is Jackson Davis, and they're leading the league in boards. That, that's a winning-ass stat. Kevon Looney, I know a lot of people forgot about him, but he's basically Dennis Rodman. This man is averaging eight boards 
in 16 minutes. If you convert that to per 36 to actually see his pace, he's averaging almost 18 rebounds a game in 36 minutes collectively. Now, without all the egos and all these stars and everybody having this specific big three, whatever role, they're all playing so well in whatever their role is. Golden State this year, they have five players all shooting 40% from deep. Their two best volume shooters, Stephen Curry and Buddy Heald, they're both top five in three-point percentage with how many threes they shoot. No disrespect to Clay, he's an absolute legend, but he also shoots as many threes as those guys, and he's been one of the worst so far this year. Instead of giving all these max contracts to a bunch of guys because they had big names, they valued depth and defense and everybody buying in to their specific roles. And so far, it's working. If you guys like this video, like this video, let me know in the comment section how you feel about this Golden State team. Are, I mean, are they real? Like, let, let me know. I feel like they are. Uh, follow my social media sites, turn on post notifications, do all that great stuff, guys. And until next time, as always, stay tuned.